Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSE. This lesson, Protein Synthesis. A lot of people have found this topic tricky and asked for some help with it, including Alicia Traore, Shanice Agyamang, Amber Aliene, Courtney Graham, Fishbite Cast, Crown British, Emily Lewis, Jake Ellis, Abdul Qureshi, Nigam Thacker, Young Flips, Rosa J, Hannah Smith, and Amina Hussein. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic which you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. The first thing to think about when you're looking at protein synthesis is what DNA is like. When you stretch DNA out and unravel it from its chromosomes, you get this double helix structure. It's a bit like a double spiral staircase or a ladder that's been twisted around on itself. The rungs of that ladder make up our genetic code. Either side of that ladder, either end of the rung, is one base, one genetic base. And that will be one of four different compounds, or rather four different sort of base compounds which are part of that longer chain of DNA. Those four are adenine, cytosine, guanine and thymine. They're normally simplified to A, C, G and T. That just makes it a little bit easier to represent them on a diagram like this. Now, each one of those will only stick to a very specific other one of those. So adenine and thymine always stick to each other. They always form either half of one of those rungs of our twisted ladder, our double helix. Likewise, guanine and cytosine only stick to each other. So if you've got one side of the ladder that starts with an A, then the other side of that rung, the other side of the ladder, should always be a T. If you've got one side that starts with a C, then the other side should always be a G, and so on. So this way you get a code on one side that sets the code on the other side of the ladder. And this is what makes DNA so incredibly good at copying itself, that really you only need half of this DNA strand in order to be able to completely recreate the other half of the DNA strand. So the way DNA replicates is it basically unzips itself along that chain and then it fills in the other half and the other half of it, that gets filled in with the first half and so you get two identical copies of the original molecule, at least in theory. Very occasionally there is a copying error, that's what we call a mutation and sometimes those can be harmful to the organism, sometimes they can be beneficial to the organism. But usually we get a perfect set of copies. So you always get A going with T to form one rung there of our double helix of our twisted ladder shape and you always get C going with G. Adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine are all referred to as bases and so when they join together we get what we call a base pair and it's this sequence of base pairs which codes for everything which our body needs to be able to do. And the way it does that is it's basically telling our body how to make the different proteins which it needs. Everything which our cells need to be able to do is set by the proteins which they're able to make. So the cell needs a complete code of all the different proteins which it needs to be able to make. And that's exactly what your DNA is. It's just a huge long code book with all the codes for everything and your cell is able to just pick out the key bit of code which it needs to be able to make the protein which it needs. And that's what we're going to be looking at, how exactly it does that. The first thing you need to be aware of though is that proteins are made from amino acids. I do discuss that in my previous video on proteins which you can see here. Now, amino acids are very simple molecules. Uh, we get them when we digest proteins and break them down. It's the broken down proteins, the amino acids, which we then absorb from our diet. Those amino acids can then be put back together by our bodies to make the proteins which we need. But our bodies have got to know what sequence to stick those amino acids together in. If you put them together in a different sequence, you will make a different protein. It will fold up in a different way and it will behave in a different way and have a different function. So the code is just telling our cells what sequence to stick together amino acids in order to make the protein which that cell needs. That's all it is, our DNA. It's just a code, a sequence saying, 
Start with this amino acid, then add that amino acid, then add that amino acid, then add that amino acid, until you get to the end of this particular sequence, and then you will have made this particular protein. So your DNA is a collection of genes. What a gene actually is, is the code, the sequence of amino acids to make one particular protein. So each individual gene is that section of DNA which says, start with this amino acid, then add that amino acid, then add that amino acid, and so on. That's all that a gene is. And the way it tells your cell how to do that is it's got a special code for each amino acid. It's got a code of three bases on that DNA. This is sometimes referred to as a triplet, because there are three of them, or sometimes referred to as a codon, because it is a section of information, a section of code within the overall code for how to make the entire protein. But the key thing here that you need to remember is it is three bases. So that could be ACT or GAC or whatever. There'll be three of them. And those three particular bases in a particular sequence will code for one particular amino acid. So imagine you've got a huge selection of amino acids, you've got a shelf full of all different amino acids, and each one of them has a three-letter code, a unique three-letter code for each one of those amino acids. And so all you need is a sequence of those codes. And so you find the first code and you pick the first amino acid. And you find the next code and you pick the next amino acid. And you find the next code and pick the next amino acid and so on. That's all that your cells are doing. So each gene is just a sequence of instructions. Add this amino acid followed by this amino acid followed by this amino acid. And that is coded for by our triplets. Our sequence of three bases also called a codon rather than a triplet. Each codon or each triplet corresponds to a particular amino acid. So you find the correct triplet and the correct amino acid that matches that triplet and put them together in the sequence which the gene tells you to and you'll make the protein. But it would be impractical for the cell to be distributing its own DNA, to be separating out that DNA and then trying to put it back together afterwards after it had made the particular protein. That wouldn't be in any way useful at all because you'd probably end up just destroying the DNA and therefore destroying the cell. So what you need is a way to copy that information. It's a bit like you've got a library full of books and you just need to get the information from one particular paragraph in one particular book. That paragraph is your gene. So the way you do it is you go to the library, you take a piece of paper and you just copy down the information. The cell does the exact same thing. This is known as transcription. It's transcription when you copy that information in a library onto a piece of paper. And it's transcription in the cell as well. The cell transcribes the information, but rather than writing it on a piece of paper, what it does is record the information as RNA. That's just ribonucleic acid rather than deoxyribonucleic acid. Now this RNA works in almost the same way as our DNA spiral, our double helix, in that the bases of RNA match bases of DNA. So our DNA, just on the section of the gene, unzips, it opens out, and the cell can then form RNA along one half of that DNA. And the bases should match up. So thymine should match with adenine. Cytosine should match with guanine. Guanine should match with cytosine. There's just one which is a little bit unusual, which is where if you have an adenine base on your DNA, the RNA doesn't put thymine as you might think. It puts something called uracil, for which we use the letter U. But other than that, it basically works the same. So again, you get a sequence of bases along our piece of RNA. Now this particular type of RNA is going to carry that information away from the DNA, out of the nucleus of the cell, and off to the parts of the cell which make the proteins. It's carrying a message, so we call it mRNA. That is messenger RNA. Remember, our mRNA is just the transcribed information from the gene. You've just transcribed all that information that the gene carries. And all the gene really carries is just a sequence of triplets telling you what order to put those amino acids in in order to make the particular protein you want. 
So you've just copied down the information on that mRNA. That then leaves the nucleus and it passes out into the cytoplasm of the cell where it finds the parts of the cells which are responsible for making the proteins. Those are the ribosomes. And the mRNA goes along and it joins onto one of these ribosomes and allows the ribosome to read the information in there. This stage of the process is called translation. All that the ribosome is doing is decoding the information in the RNA. It's decoding that sequence so that it can understand what order to put those amino acids together in. So we've got transcription, which is just copying the information, and translation, which is decoding the information. And it's the ribosomes doing the translation. So the ribosome's got a sequence of code in the form of the mRNA. That code is broken into triplets and it needs to translate that. The way it does that is with another type of RNA, not mRNA this time, but tRNA. That's short for transfer RNA. And you can think of the transfer RNA as being a little bit like tags for the different types of amino acids. For every single type of amino acid, there is a type of tRNA which it will be attached to. And those sections of tRNA, on the end of them, have a triplet code of their own. And that triplet code is unique to each individual type of tRNA and each individual amino acid. So the ribosome matches the tRNA up to the mRNA. It's making that same matching process. So if you had CGA for the first section of mRNA, then you would get a triplet code on the tRNA which went GCT. And they go through matching up in exactly the same way. The only key difference here is that the mRNA may have that uracil which would match up once again with adenine. But it works basically the same way as in DNA where thymine would match up with adenine. It's the same process of just matching these bases up. So in a ribosome, the first piece of tRNA, which matches the first triplet code in our mRNA, comes along and it's carrying an amino acid, which matches up to that first triplet code as well. Then the next piece of tRNA comes along and it's also carrying an amino acid. And that matches up to the next triplet code on the mRNA, the next step in our sequence. So you have two amino acids and they're joined together by a peptide link. And then the next piece of tRNA comes along which matches to the next triplet code and they're joined on by another peptide link and so on. And you end up with these amino acids joined together in a long polypeptide chain. It's a little bit like polymerization, only instead of all the monomers being exactly the same as one another, the code tells us first use this monomer, then use that monomer that's different, then use that monomer that's different, then use that monomer and so on. So it's more sophisticated than polymerization. The underlying process is similar, but we get to say, first we're going to use that, then that, then that. And we string all these amino acids together in this big long chain, all of which was originally coded for by our DNA. That code was transcribed by the mRNA. Then that went off to the ribosome. The ribosome then used tRNA to bring in amino acids one at a time, matching those triplet codes, string them all together in our polypeptide chain and form our protein. I hope that video really helped you. To see what else I can help you with, there's lots more videos to check out on my channel. Scroll down the main page there to see I've already sorted them into playlists to help you find the video you need. You can also check out my revision guides which cover everything you need to know for the exam. They feature links to my videos, revision tips, cover both foundation and higher tier, and unlike a lot of revision guides, they also point out what you don't need to waste time learning. If you want to check your learning, try the SnapQuiz website and app, which allow you to identify which areas you need to spend the most time learning. Remember, this is the only YouTube channel which brings you the teachers, the textbooks and the tests all on your terms, on mobile phone, tablet or computer for you to revise when you want and how you want, even immediately before you go into the exam. All of these links and any others for this video will be down in the description.
Lastly, it really does help my channel if you want to leave your likes, if you subscribe, or if you know someone else who's having trouble, tell them to search for Mr. Thornton. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.